It's me, Renee. I'm back. So today, I have a video for you. That's a video for you. I don't know what to say in a video. But yeah. I have a video for you that's kind of late. Well, it's not late, late, but yeah. Um, so I just discovered this video, so it's not late in that way. But yeah. So the concept is 20 books challenge. Well, of, sorry. 20, 20 books of summer challenge. So it's a challenge where you challenge yourself to read 20 books during the summer but it can also be 15 books or 10 books if you if you think 20 is too many so I suppose this in a way is kind of like I think it's more geared to people who like who often have two busy lives that they can't read that much that they want to like maybe they want to try to read more normally I normally read much so it's not that difficult for me in that way to read 20, 20 books in one summer but still, I kind of want to do this still because I'm thinking of doing this challenge as a way like, to challenge myself to like focusing on reading these books. Because if I don't like put books on TBRs, I might just think, ah, I'll read them later. I'll read them then. I'll read them later. And I'll just unprioritize books. But if I put books in a TBR, it's kind of in a way like it makes my, it makes myself myself. It makes me accountable for the books. So yeah. These are books that I highly want to prioritize for the summer. Uh, so, and yeah, it's the challenge starts from the first of June to the first of September. So, as we're already eleven books, eleven books, eleven days into June, we already started in a way. But yeah, I'm still doing it because I felt like it seemed fun, and also I just found out about it. I can't really, I can't start a challenge before I find out about it. I can't believe really I started this for the first of June because I didn't know about it. That would be a diff bit difficult. Also, if I had a time machine, I would do way other stuff with it and going back one week. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. But yeah, um, so yeah, I found this video on both Brie Hills and uh, Happy For Now or Isabel's channel. Happy For Now. Uh, I'll link them both in the video. And yeah. Let's get to the books. So actually some of these them books, them books, some of these books are physical books and some are audiobooks. And of, of course, it's not of course, but like the audiobooks I have on my cell phone. So I won't be able to show them to you, but I'll link them in doobly. The physical books, I'll show you. Obviously, well, kind of obviously. But yeah, let's get to them. And yeah, we have quite a little mix of books, so that's quite fun, really. First, stuff just starts, yeah, chaotic. Uh, first, we have One Italian Summer by Carrie Statton. So this is a book I found completely random while we're looking for books on, in London earlier this year. Am I just bragging slightly about them going to London earlier this year? Maybe I'm no, bragging is like that you're doing it way too much. I'm saying it now and then. It doesn't really matter where I bought this. I bought this earlier this year. And I didn't really know that much about it. But it looks cute and fun. It's contemporary, so it's set in Italy. Obviously. Kind of there in the title, really. And it's blurb blurbed by Rainbow Rowell. So, yeah. So, yeah. Then we have, <clears throat> sorry, narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, Douglas, an American slave, and incident in the life of a slave slave girl. So it's a bind up, or yeah, bind up of Frederick Douglass and Harriet Jacobs. And I got this one, uh, yes, actually from a used bookstore, and I'm interested to get to it. And it's quite a relative. Yeah, it's quite. Uh, it's quite actualized. It's pretty good for these days, really, to read more up. And yeah, as I said before, in other words, I want to read more about the African American experience. And yeah, you don't really, I suppose it's just as important to read about the slave period and slave time as the time that we are in now. And yeah, I have this one, so I'm going to try to get it. Really, this I'm going to prioritize highly, highly. If I don't get this one, Give me looks, okay? Give me looks, emojis. Because, but I'll be stupid. 
So next we have Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. It's actually the only, yeah, the only Sanderson book I have. I actually don't really own any Sanderson books, but I've heard lots of great stuff about him. And also this book is superheroes. It's not that long. So yeah, I plan to get to it soon this summer. This summer. I want to get to it. Well, that's what I just said. But yeah. And then we have The Contender, The Chosen by Taran Afaru. So this is <clears throat> sorry. This is the first in the new series. I'm pretty sure it's a book that's I'm not sure if it's high fantasy or just like middle fantasy, like in a way that it's Narnia, portal fantasy, like slightly our world, slightly another world. But I do know there's some like inspiration at least from mythical uh, and historical times in our world, like the uh, old Egypt, e Egyptians and Romans and stuff. So yeah, I'm very curious about this this one. It's also actually signed by Ilford, so that's quite cool. So yeah. And we have The Reese Malcolm List by Amy Spaulding. So this is actually her first book. Yeah, it's her first book. I read it years ago, well I'm pretty sure it was the year it came out, or around the year it came out. Really enjoyed it. But lately I've been reading, reading some of her books and I not, haven't been loving it. So I'm thinking like, maybe I won't like it this time around. But I've been, been remembering, I remember really loving it when I read it the first time. So I'm curious really, will I still like it? Or maybe it's an old lap? I don't know. I remember loving it. So who knows? We'll see. And yeah, the same goes for Ink is, thick, it's, Ink is Thicker Than Water by Amy Spaulding. Again, it's her second book. I remember really loving it. So I'm curious if I'll still like it now. And uh, it's contemporary, it's YA, and uh, it's family based. And yeah, I think it's very family based. There's some romance in it, but I think it's very like family based. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forget almost, like, I make a system and I forget about the system and then I just, it's just chaos. Complete chaos, chaos. But yeah. Then we have Josie Griffin is not a vampire by Heather Welsh. So it's a book from like 2012 or something. It's from 2012, 20, 20, yeah? Ha! Good guess! And it's a parody. Yeah, something quite different, really. A parody of YA Paranormal books. And so, yeah, it was quite fun. I read it like six seven years ago really enjoyed it i'm thinking i might still enjoy it but might be uh outdated i don't know so i'm going to pick it up again and then we have team human by justin labarlestier and sarah reese brennan this is also a parody though it's a parody of all vampire books so it's more specific though the other one is like on fairy and vampires and werewolves and all the stuff. So yeah, I remember really liking this as well. Though this might be a good, not good, good anymore. I'm not sure. I want to check it out. Then we have The Beholder by Anna Bright. It's the first in the series, and the sequel is out this year, or I think exactly like this week or something. But yeah, I want to really want to get to it. It's females. It's pirates. I'm just so excited to get to it. And yeah, hopefully it's as good as it seems. It has blurbs from Kira Cass and Evelyn Sky. Neither of I really enjoy that much, but I still might really like this one. So yeah. Uh, and then we're almost finished. And then we have Charleston e Grokedal. So it's a Norwegian book. It's a Norwegian book about African Americans' uh, music and African Americans in Norway. Uh, so it's a non fiction book, it's African Americans. So I thought 
this fits like feels like a good time to read this one and yeah it's kind of big but i think it likes yeah it has lots of pictures so in that way it's kind of easy to get, get to probably and yeah then we have Condena or Hexel by Richard Hawkins. So you might guess this is something weird with this weird with this one. It's Hexel in Spanish. I bought it like actually I think like eleven years ago now. I read I'm pretty sure I read all the books in Spanish. But I haven't read them since. And um uh, Quiero leer en español otra vez. Quiero usar mi español. Quiero hacerlo. Y porque no he sido. No sé porque soy estúpido. No, no sé, no sé. Porque soy flojo, podría hacer, podría hacer. Pero ahora, ahora voy a leerlo. Yeah, I was uh, interrupted by my mom. So yeah, I'm back. So yeah, I want to get get to this one. Highly, highly stupid. Get you after this one. I'm gonna read it. Definitely. Then last we have. All notes and Sorte Greven by Tom Race. It's actually a Pulitzer Prize winner. It's also non fiction and it's the real story of of the Mount, the Count of Monte Cristo. So the Count of Monte Cristo was actually based on a real guy and he was African. So that's quite cool really. And I've been curious about reading this book for quite some time now. And yeah. So this summer, I'm getting into it. I definitely, definitely am. So, and that are all the physical books I'm trying to get to. I will get to, not try, I will get to. Though, as I said, I do have... Where are my notes? My notes. My notes. My notes flew away. Where did my notes go? Where did my notes go? Life is nice. I've lost my notes, my notebooks. Oh, this is just so peachy. Okay, give me a moment. Found it. Yeah. Mm. Do I have like systems and control or stuff? No. Can't really say I do. But yeah, and uh, so the yeah, so the rest of them are as I said audiobooks. So I've written them down here. Uh, so we have Great Speeches by Martin Luther King. That's an audiobook. I have A Song of Rates, Rates and Ruin. Uh, and that's I probably should write down all the names. I didn't do that. I do there were some of them, but yeah. And then Rebel Woman Who Dare by Beverly Jenkins. She writes historical fiction with POC characters, characters. Then you have Band Sinister by KJ Charles, which is a uh, which is um gay historical fiction. Then you have Tarnished Are It Stars by Rosie Four, and that's science fiction with the queerness. Then you have A Little Light Mischief by Kat Sebastian, which is a sapphic historical romance. Then you have To, La to Lahore with Love by Hina Belitz, and that's a contemporary adult romance with POC characters. And lastly, you have Of Fire and Stars by Aubrey, I forgot her last name, I'll link it in doo doo. And yeah, so those are 20 books I really want to get to. This summer, I will get to them now. I will definitely will. And uh, yeah, hopefully, you enjoyed this video a bit uh, all over, but yeah, and I'll see you later.